We're also joined by Marley's interpreter and producing partner, Jack Jason. <laughs> Marley, it's so great to see you because we've seen each other throughout the years. We know each other a little bit at either charity events and what have you. Uh, and I know we both came up in Hollywood in the 80s and 90s. What, what do you remember about that time? Wait a minute, I wasn't even born then. <laughs> what are you talking about? You were about? an infant, I know. <laughs> I know. No, I got out of high school in 1983, and in 86 is when I started my first movie, Children of a Lesser God. So that was like, I was thrust into Hollywood. Yeah. I was thrust. I mean, the 80s were so, so much was going on, and you know what? I miss what I, about the 80s? The shoulder pads. I miss my shoulder pads. <laughs> I felt so tall wearing shoulder pads. <laughs> it, it was like you were, were linebackers. Oh my God. Oh, oh God. look at that. Rocking the shoulder pads right no, there. No, not that one. <laughs> and, and you mentioned Children of Lesser God, and of course you won an Oscar for that. You were 21 years old. I remember that vividly. Um, I, I, you were two, right? Yeah, was, yeah right. <laughs> I wish. Uh, wh wh where do you keep it? I keep it, well, I mean, it depends, really where we are, what day it is. Um, I typically uh, put it in the background in my bedroom or I do with it sometimes. Well, I'm not sure if this is okay, but um, my kids, I have four kids. And so when they come over, they'll have friends come with them. And if they're new friends, uh, my kids will be saying, mom, you have to really shake their hand really strong. Okay, because they're terrified because you're deaf. I don't know what it is. So I shake their hand. They come in. I, they put out their hand like this. I'm like, what are you doing? And I shake the hand. And they're usually pretty sweaty anyway. <laughs> and then when I want to break the ice, I'll go into the other room and bring out the Oscar. And they're like, look at that Oscar right there. <laughs> wow, right in the face. I I'm curious. I know, I know your kids are grown up now, but Marley, did they try to get away with more because you're deaf? Uh, plenty of times, plenty of times. And it, I, you know how I get even with them? How? My kids get away with so much because they think I'm the deaf mom who can't hear, but then I let them know that I can really hear sometimes. I mean, it's reverse psychology. Like I'm driving, we're in the back seat, they're in the back seat, I'm driving, and the, you know, it's a big suburban car, whatever it is, and I, I'm looking in the rearview mirror and everybody's looking, everybody's okay. And the kids, not my kids, their friends, are like, what's going on here? <laughs> because the music, they turn it up really loud. It's uncensored. It's whatever the rap music I can't hear. Sure. Curse words, and, everything. And, and, and then they're like, how does your mom let you listen to this kind of stuff? Their parents would never let them listen to it, but I let them listen. So that's how they get away with it. It's sort of reverse psychology. Got it. They, they, you've got the cool mom. Cool mom on lock I, right there. I am cool. You are cool. <laughs> yeah. What, is it true, Marley, that you, you wanted to be a police officer when you were younger? Well, one time, yes, in my life, I did want to be a police officer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you want to ask about what? <laughs> what it is that I wanted to be? Okay. So how, how, what happened? Well, I mean, listen, I don't know. I went to community college and right after high school, just for one semester, and I took a criminal justice class. And my teacher, a professor, was a cop, and he took me out of the class one day, and he said... Uh, Marley, why are you taking my class? And I said, well, just like everybody else, uh, I want to be a cop. He goes, well, you're deaf. I go, I know, I'm deaf. He goes, well, how are you going to do that? How are you going to hear the radio? I go, well, I'll have a dog. And he goes, yeah, the dog is going to listen to the radio right. for you, right? <laughs> and that, that, that career went by the wayside, so. <laughs> and you ended, up, you ended up marrying a cop, though, correct? Just by coincidence did I marry a cop. Oh, Just wow, like look at that. I mean, the uniform, who can resist a uniform? Yeah. I can't resist a uniform. I, I've actually played a cop a few times, so I know all about uh, wearing well, wait, the wait, uniform. Wait, wait, don't get me started, okay? With, with what? <laughs> oh, no, that cop, yeah. <laughs> Santa Monica cop Hello. of all the times, really. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, next pick. <laughs> I want to talk about the movie Coda because I'm hearing so many great, great things about this movie. Oscar buzz, great reviews. I I'm sure you're thrilled that uh, it's getting received so well. I am absolutely ecstatic about it because finally it's been a long time coming where we've had three deaf actors, authentically deaf actors, carrying a movie. That's, that hasn't happened. That's before. awesome. That's awesome. And a friend of mine, Eugenio Derbez, is in the movie, and uh, he's a great guy, isn't he? I for, love him. He's for the, great. For those not familiar with the premise, tell, tell us what it's about. The movie is about a family of four who live in a small fishing town in Massachusetts, Gloucester, Massachusetts, and they are in the fishing business. And they have a boat, they have their own business going on, and that's how they earn a living. That's how they sell fish, they, they make a living. And the parents and the oldest son 
is deaf, and then there's a hearing daughter. And you see the different dynamics in this family of deaf and hearing people. And the girl who, who's playing a coda, coda means child of deaf adults, she wants to sing. And music for us, the three of us, it's not who we are. We, we really aren't connected with music. So there's a lot of layers in this film about what the journey they go through, watching her grow, uh, develop a love for music while leaving the rest of us sort of behind. Oh, that's awesome. That's Again, congratulations on all the buzz it's getting on. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, I know you're going to stick around, so we're going to have more with Marley in just a bit. You, you've been in the business for uh, uh, quite a long time now, and you've had such an amazing career. So we're going to put up some photos from your life, and you're going to have to tell us the story behind them, okay? So let's go to the first one, please. Uh -oh. oh, that's the Fonz, Henry Winkler. Like the nicest guy in Hollywood. He's you are, awesome. You are absolutely right. He is the nice guy. One of the nicest people you ever meet. Um, I mean, you ever, ever will meet in Hollywood. I've not met anyone who says bad things about Henry Winkler. Henry Winkler, the Fonz, if you don't know who that is. I met him when I was 12 years old really? in Chicago, where I'm from. And he, he was, from that day forward, uh, he's, I told him I wanted to be an actress in Hollywood just like him. Why not? He said. And we kept in touch over the years. He became my mentor from when I was 12 until I'm... And so then... Um, uh, and he ended up he, at your wedding. And I got married at his house. We, oh, wow. I lived at their house for two years. Oh, what for a two fun years. fact. So he's the best. That's so cool. He really is the best. He really is the best. OK, let's go to the next pick, please. Oh, oh, great. One of my favorite, favorite jobs I've ever had. Seinfeld, it, it's, it's epic. It's an epic show, an epic job. Uh, I mean, Jerry told me that this episode is one of his top 10 favorites. Oh, wow. The lip reader episode. So they, I mean, I'm still stopped every day by people who say Seinfeld. All they say is, Let, let's sweep together. Because, I mean, if you watch the show, you'll, sure. that's a famous line in the episode. And, and you were nominated for an Emmy for this performance, yep. too. That's right. Wow, yep. That's awesome. That is so awesome. <laughs> okay, we've got one more. Let's see this one. <gasps> oh, great. Martin, oh, Sheen. Martin, Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen. This is from the, who watches the West Wing? Who watched the West Wing? Yeah. So uh, that's our favorite president here, Martin Sheen. And <laughs> we're at the um, White House Correspondents Dinner here. And I was very pregnant with my second child. Oh, you look beautiful. And, and I well, I'm, I, I have no wrinkles in this picture, though. <laughs> um, so in this picture, we were in line going in to meet the president. And you know you have to go through the, social, you know, the, the security check through, and they have right. to vet you. And I went in and said, hi, I'm Marlene Matlin. said, you're not on the list. Oh. And Martin, who's behind me, said, well, no, 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 she's on the show. I'm not going to go in if she's not going in, unless she goes in. I thought, well, no, no, Martin, you can go in, go in. But he convinced the Secret Service to let me in. And when we were done and we were leaving, and you know there's all those fans and photographers right. and the cast was walking through of the West Wing, and they're screaming, not West Wing, but Blue's Clues, because I happen to be on Blue's Clues. And they're oh, looking at me funny. like, why are they screaming Blue's Clues? Like, what, what is she, what? We don't get it, but that's what happened. Those are great. Those are such great stories. Marla, you're the best. Congratulations on everything. And listen, Coda is streaming now on Apple TV+. Be sure to check it out, and we'll be right back.